it's, it's just really, really lovely. Um, uh, I feel like I drove into a, a, a gas station just or a rest stop uh, just for a you know, 10 minute walk around the car. And I find that oh, there's this huge banquet is set there for us, uh, just you know, uh, so spontaneous and so um, uh, so life giving. Thank everybody who has been sharing. They uh, very very touching and remi it reminds me of our of our strengths, but it also reminds me of the strength the strengths that we have now, which is very encouraging. Um, <clears throat> back in 19. 62, um, I first met Richard Rohr and Elmer Fischesser. Uh, we were at Dunscotus College together. And uh, Elmer and I were lay students in our first year, and Richard had just come out of the novitiate. And only God could imagine what would happen. In our lives after that. Um, I'm thinking of Elmer and Ginger, of course. But I'm thinking of Elmer with his uh, this funeral coming up next week on Sunday. Um, then, after ordination, uh, I lived with Richard during the clericate, and then uh, after his ordination, he was at Saint uh, Clement, and I was uh, down at Pleasant Street. After my ordination, I went off into art school, graphics at DAA, and uh, Richard asked me if I would to come on over to participate at New Jerusalem uh, one summer when the summer 74 when he was traveling out west with some of the guys and I went over and that's when a fire was lit within me to uh, be part of this somehow you know and I wasn't sure what that meant because I just got clearance to go for a way for studies um, Richard and I would we came when he came back we would get together over at St. Clement's and pray um, uh, before the prayer meeting on Friday nights. And um, we didn't know what to do, you know. I was deeply attracted. He was eager for some help. Uh, we were good friends. We'd been friends for years. And uh, so in tr our clear tradition, we prayed for the afternoon, but then we had crypt open up the Bible to cut scripture, you know. And we would hope to get a reading. And Richard opened the Bible. And we, we got a, a, a verse from the book of Numbers that has changed my life. Uh, the, the reading was uh, better two together than one by himself, because if one were to fall, the other could help him up. And that's when we kind of were amazed at this reading. And we thought, well, this is what we should try to do and see if we can get permission for me to come over and join New Jerusalem. And I, that is the beginning of, of an incredible journey in my life. Um, as many of you have said, uh, all the friends that we have, the, all that we've learned together, all the experimenting we've done together, all the, the challenges and the music and the, uh, the opportunity, the travel we've had together has just been astounding over the years. Um, New Jerusalem has been um, a, the rock, basically, even more so than my own Franciscan uh, formation. Uh, New Jerusalem was where I was formed in so many ways as a, as a man, as a, as a friend, um, as a companion with Richard, uh, and, um, and learning with the pastoral team in those days was just an incredible experience of, uh, of wisdom, of um, learning, like from Pat to interpret going with dreams. We studied the Enneagram together. Um, we were on traveling teams together. Uh, it was a it was a, a part of my life that I, I constantly refer back to, and and met all my closest friends in Cincinnati. Even now, um, are people who I have had contact with because of or during New Jerusalem days. Um, New Jerusalem was a, a powerful experience for me personally um, in terms of uh, my just psychological growing up, accepting myself, uh, learning how to, to share on a deeper level. Um, 
the friends that I developed there have been uh, lifelong companions. Um, it also professionally was a, a training, a formation program for, for learning how to counsel people, how to beginning, how to uh, work with people in spiritual direction, uh, how to hope in people. Uh, that was one of the, uh, and, and not only say, well, I have a tendency to hope in people, I'm kind of sentimental, but no, it's like that, that to really look and believe in the goodness of these people around us. And you see somebody's immaturity, but they, you know, they're able to grow and they, they grow into these magnificent people. Um, that was such a marvelous experience um, to, trust, um, to trust my goodness and to trust your goodness. Uh, and will you, that God is in this. Oh. New Jerusalem also gave me um, the, the profound uh, agreement that my, my own personal religious experience of God as Trinity as a child, that that was valid and that it was and it, it's, a, it's a fountain that I can continue to, to work out of, to, to preach from, to live out of, to refer to in terms of relationships and everything. But it was the, it was the support of you and others in New Jerusalem that um, gave me such a, uh, a security um, in my faith um, and a deeper love and appreciation to investigate it more, more, uh, more deeply. Um, even after I left, I, well, I was in New Jerusalem uh, that from October of uh, 74 until 89 or so when I went over to, uh, to Italy. Uh, people from New Jerusalem followed me, uh, sometimes even literally take, going over to, to times in Rome, but also especially in Geneva. Um, many of you were very tremendously helpful in supporting our, our ministry there. And, um, and wherever I've been, people are always asking, well, tell me more about this new Jerusalem thing. What was this? And then they would, people would show up, Diane would show up, or Tina and John Nyer would show up in Geneva, and people, oh, now we understand. Now we understand what it was, must have been like. It must have been wonderful. And all you can say, it was, and it still is. Um, I, I would have to say that um, the greatest gift for me in this time has been to be with Richard, a uh, companion. Um, <laughs> you know, we lived in a little house together and um, we had been together, as I said, since 62, but we were never just by ourselves. And so living with Richard and the little house was uh, an amazing gift. We did, we thought it was wonderful and it was good. And that, uh, I don't think I really understood how powerful and good and important that was in my own life. And uh, I can remember we slept in the same room and we had, a lot of times we just keep on talking. <laughs> you know, we could, you can imagine two of us talking that long, we'd go on through, you know, until we, one of us fell asleep. But I remember once he said that, you know, for the past eight, nine years, whatever it was at that time at New Jerusalem, that we had had such a rich, rich life with so many really good people that our lives as friars, as priests in the church, being part of a faith community, we already had lived more than many people did in 25, 40 years. And uh, we could die tomorrow and be completely, completely uh, fulfilled. And I, we really meant that. And, I, and I, uh, I think of that periodically because both of us have lived uh, almost two or three other lives since then. Um, but I think that the grace that we received in those days um, was uh, an amazing, amazing uh, gift. Um, and it wasn't just that we go back in a sentimental way like today and remember the, how important and good those were, but the people and the experience at New Jersey really put gas in our tanks. 
uh, that Richard moved out to, to Albuquerque and had, had a passion for, for something new and deep. And only God knows where, how far this is going to take him. You know, it's just amazing. Uh, I was blessed by being over in Rome with very good people. And some of you know many of the people I worked with there. Uh, oh, there are nine, 10 years, then in Geneva for nine, 10 years. And now I'm back here in Cincinnati. And um, some of you, <laughs> I can mention uh, Fran and, and Peg Niehaus, um, who have been very, very kind and generous, keeping me um, operating and then Kathy and Mark Brunner who are my landlords for this studio that I'm in right now. Uh, their generosity has been um, amazing and when I tell people about how I got to be in this studio or how I'm living here in Cincinnati now it all the story of New Jerusalem comes into it you know and continues to come with the different people um, so those are things that have uh, uh, been how you have been part of my life. Um, and the, the, your sharings today just confirm, validate, uh, uh, just make me very happy. Um, uh, I'm thinking that it's 30 years now uh, since Roberta died. And, um, and with Elmer's passing just a few weeks ago, that we're constantly moving into this much bigger picture. And our times at New Jerusalem, whether they're five, six, 10, 15 years, whatever it was, it gives us a, a foretaste of what is possible for us as, uh, as believers. Uh, and um, so I thank you for uh, each of you who have shared and uh, I thank you for what you've shared now, but also what you shared 50 years ago, 45 years ago, 48 years ago, um, 35 years ago, et cetera. Um, and um, yeah, that's, I guess what I would say. I, I'm deeply grateful. Um, and I'm very grateful for that one Friday afternoon when Richard opened up the Bible and we put our finger, he put his finger in there, and it came to come to think, better two than one by himself. For together, if one falls, the other can help him up. I keep remembering people I haven't mentioned. Wow. <laughs> one is Sister Pat, you know, ah. St. Pat Brockman, uh, who followed us in, in, out, of loy out of enthusiasm to Geneva and uh, continues to be um, in so many people's hearts. <laughs>